westernized version of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Yeah. My Lord and Savior. Amen. He is the absolute remission of my sins, past, present, and future. Ooh. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. What we was talking about this, and I don't know if you want to sound the mic, but I'll say it to you, but say it, there man. is I looked around, there was pregnant women passing, mm -hmm. they didn't notice. There was older people passing, they didn't notice. It yeah. didn't matter what race they was, it didn't matter what they was, they were just keeping their head straight. And that, that one little lady passed by, I was like, yeah, you know, like as soon yeah. as you said Jesus, I saw a Muslim girl pass, mm -hmm. and then you mentioned the name of Jesus because she was a you know, that was good. Okay. Okay. Lord of God, that's, that's, that takes a lot. Yeah. My girl was saying over here, it's people feel guilty, I feel. Maybe they don't notice because they feel guilty. The gospel is, as you know, offensive. Of course, yeah. You can't be told you're a terrible person continually and not know why you're getting to the point of being told that you're a terrible person. Right. The point is you're terrible in his standards. His mm. standards is holy. Amen. So we can't go to him unholy. He wants us to, but we don't have that. Mm -hmm. I've noticed the best thing, and I don't know what you believe, my brother, I don't even know your name. Yeah. But if you preach in the name of Jesus, I'll call you my brother. Amen. I will tell you, Matthew 22 talks about two commandments. Mm -hmm. These guys try to entangle Jesus and trap him in words. Absolutely. And then they talk about what is the greatest of the commandments. Mm -hmm. Moses left 10. The Jews went a little nuts and turned it into 620. I'm sure you maybe you know this. And 613. 613 and then 7 cardinal for the body. Okay. That they sum up to 620 from 10. And that was because they counted every character of the letters on the tablets. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. 620 letters on that tablet. They made a sin, for, in a sense, for every character. Mm -hmm. So Jesus seen what they'd done with 10. This is like a big spotlight moment. And then they, he preaches two. Yeah. He says, love thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. Mm -hmm. And the second is, love thy neighbor. Yeah. Everyone's your neighbor. I don't know how to go, like, I'm on the same track as you, let's say. Yeah. I want to get out in the streets and preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to look around the people and keep their head down and go mass preaching. But yeah. I do know that there is love that behind the basis of everything that's preached in that book. Yeah. It's all love. So is it preaching people saying they love you, I love you, do good for people, is it charity? Because I don't know, and of course it could work because it's worked in the Bible previously, but I don't know if preaching up on the street telling people they're going to hell. I don't know how that works. Yeah. Can I give you a verse? Yeah, Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus, he said, repent or you will all likewise perish. And even in Matthew chapter 4, where after he got baptized and he began his ministry, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So if we don't repent, then we will all likewise perish. And sometimes it's best that people know why they need to follow after God. Because my question, I didn't grow up in the church. I would always say, why are you telling me to believe in God for? I don't want to believe in God. And they would say, well, he says that if you don't repent, then you're going to go to hell for eternity. And I would really question that and say, whoa, you know, and I know some people say, oh, we don't like that. But, you know, Jesus did it. So we just do what Jesus did. And also in the book of Jude, it says that some people, they get saved by compassion. How you would probably preach and say, I love you, I love you, I love you. That's good, too, if God is in your heart and he's leading you to do that. But the next verse in Jude, it says some get saved by getting snatched out of that fire, hating the garments defiled by the flesh. So there's two ways of preaching. Sometimes it's boom, 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 like John the Baptist and people receive it. And there's other times where it's just gentle and loving, one-on-one, -on -one, preferably, where people can get saved. But... Uh, preaching of the gospel it's all it's a jesus said let it be done even paul said he was never going to stop anyone from doing it even if they did it out of the wrong motives so i know the verses you're talking about because it says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand yeah. now i did a little dive into this kingdom of heaven the word hell isn't biblical it, the word she all is um, the great eternal lake of fire and then the lake of fire, there's a few levels to this. Jerusalem is built on a hill. Mm -hmm. So it has a hierarchy. The man on top is the man on top. The highest mountain was built on the king's temple. He sits above all. So in that was a gate. 
in Jerusalem. Out of the gates, they would throw bodies. They would throw ugly stuff. And the deeper it would go, the dirtier it would get. Imagine at that time with all the modern things we have today, how much ugliness would be in this pit. You wouldn't send people anywhere near. It's not eternal lake of fire, but it is ugly. So I'll tell you, he speaks of something, and this gets a little deep, but at this point, this is two believers speaking God's name in his verse in a city that I absolutely believe needs God. So we'll talk about this just for a second. Before you go on to that, I did want to say that hell is in the Bible. It's translated from Sheol and hell. Hades. Yeah. So Hades is the, I believe, the Greek version of hell, and then Sheol is the Hebrew version of hell. So it's the same thing. In Jesus, he warned people of hell more than he did heaven. He spoke about that word hell more than he spoke about the word heaven. Do you know where my problem, Do you know where my problem came in? No, where's your problem at? I didn't know how the devout Buddhist or the devout Muslim goes to heaven or goes to hell. I didn't understand it. I know us. I know salvation. I know understanding grace seals you until the day of redemption. No one else can unseal you. Amen. I agree. I agree. The other people. There's three, pe there's three people in this world. Typically, there is the people that have a moral compass that are saved, the people that have a moral compass that are not saved, and then the people that don't have moral pure evil. It's ugly people. It's where you hear ugly things in the world. I truly believe that they deserve hell. Well, where's your verse for that? Because in Romans chapter 1, it says that no one is without an excuse, and they all know that there is a God. Oh, fully. I do agree to that. So, us and the Muslims follow the same God, in a sense. No, they follow Allah, and their God denies Jesus as the Messiah. They don't believe that Jesus is God. Their, their prophet denies Jesus as God, Muhammad. Their God, Allah, which in their terminology comes from the Torah God that mm -hmm. we both serve, that we stem from our testaments. Mm -hmm. Our testaments go back to Abraham, where he had a daughter with Hagar, yeah. a son with I Hagar, the maidservant, yeah. and then they split. And that's where you get Muslim and mm -hmm. Christianity, Absolutely. in a sense. Absolutely. Their father is Allah in a different name, but you have to understand that this is... That's the same God of the Jews. So I understand that. Yeah. And I know that Allah is God in Aramaic. I know that. Yeah. But at the same time, their Quran, and it's not hard. I preach it all the time. They get mad. But in their Quran, they deny Jesus as being God. They just view him as a prophet, and that's it. They don't believe they have to repent and believe in him as the Messiah in order for them to be saved. They don't even know if they're going to heaven. So that's why I was saying that they don't know what they're talking about. But their Quran does. I mean, to me, it says Jesus is God because he's the only one recorded in their holy book that didn't sin. Muhammad sinned. Surah chapter 47, verse 2. It's all over I'm, the place. I'm, I, I, their book is, in, in my sense, trash. I don't, I don't, okay, God, amen. God bless amen. their you know, belief. It's amen. wrong. It's terrible. That, I understand that. that. Their book was written way after our dimension of God Amen. was even. It was 600 and some years after Jesus. It doesn't even, uh, yeah. But it's because they have their terminology and their stuff is wrong. It doesn't take anything else that they took a religion that is biblically founded in our Bible. Absolutely. So I didn't know where they go. Getting back to the point. Okay. It was confusing because they were kind of brothers. They were grafted, but then the stick was thrown on the floor. So they weren't of us. So now, I understood that God talks about a few places. Previous to Jesus, there was a holding place. Amen. We see Samuel in that holding place, get brought up from the realm of the dead. Amen. Jesus came, took the captives back, and now we have salvation. Amen. Same page. So, the eternal lake of fire is meant for Lucifer, the serpent, which is the great dragon, and the devil. Those are the only three people that I've no named in the Bible that will suffer the eternal lake of fire. And his angels. You forgot that one. Remember Jesus um, said that his angels would be tossed in as well. And that uh, one third of them departed. You got to do a, a word study with me because I'll show you. What is, there is the lake of fire yeah. and then the eternal lake of fire. Okay. Which blew my mind. It really okay. did. Um, and then you have outer darkness. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you studied this outer darkness? Yeah, I've, I've seen it. So... Well, I know where you're going to go because I've dealt with people like that and that's totally fine. But 
Um, at the same time, I believe that those words are synonymous. Outer darkness, because when you're in darkness, you're not in God's light. You're set apart from Him. So I believe that that can also refer to hell, because in hell there is no light. God's not there. He's separated from it. And I know you're saying, oh, some people, they may not go to the lake of fire or the eternal lake of fire. But Jesus makes it very clear that those that won't inherit the kingdom of God, they're going to go into fire. You could call it whatever you want, but it's for eternal. Now, the second part to this, let's say you understood this sliding scale of hierarchy, because that's what the outer darkness is. Yeah. The Jews go there, where there will be weeping or gnashing of teeth, where they will see the gates, but cannot get through to salvation, because they didn't accept Jesus. Beyond that is that hill that I talked about in Jerusalem. It gets dirtier. Yeah. That's why when you hear people talk about the afterlife, they're like, I don't know where I was. It wasn't light, it wasn't dark. But I was there and I saw people I knew, but it was strange. It's called the outer darkness. We get judged. Now we have judgment. Yeah. This is where the judgment makes sense. You get judged. Well, me and you get judged differently. As believers, yeah. as believers in Jesus Christ, I agree. we get judged in our good. It's a bad died with our flesh. We don't care about our bad. Jesus don't care about it. We have no sin. Therefore, Jesus is our redeemer. We only get judged on our good. Wait, where's the verse for that? Because I read in Corinthians that he said he's going to burn up our works if they're not profitable in his sight. In a refining process. Mm. Everything goes through the fire. That's really good. We should worry about non-believers. Yeah, that's what I was literally about to say. <laughs> You heard me say Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Because the nation of Islam, we read the Holy Bible. They do. Farrakhan said do. But the Sunnis don't believe in Would I be able to respond to you? Yes. Okay, so. Because I once was a Muslim when the nation of Islam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We read the Holy Bible. Yeah, so a lot of people read the Bible, but they don't do what it says. But, but he preached, you know, so. I understand. But just because someone preaches the Bible doesn't mean that they're yeah, preaching it correctly. Because Jesus, he would rebuke the Pharisees who knew the Bible better than Elijah Muhammad. No, you, you're running away from a, a dialogue. You are. You can't just say that and run off. If Muslims believe in Jesus, then why don't they know if they're going to go to heaven when they die? Salvation is sure for those that believe in Jesus. But they don't even know if they're going to get into paradise. Mecca is not heaven. See, people, so you got to study to show yourself approved. No, it, it actually doesn't. I don't know what paradise you're talking about, but go get a brother. All right, praise God. You see that? Jesus, he's the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. And I'm so glad that people are out here engaging with the preacher and people are actually using their brains to talk because a lot of times we get scared to say what we believe in or we back down and we shy away, but... Everybody has to be able to believe in something. And we gotta test what everyone believes because we can't have it's finished on the cross. I don't see how I could lose it. The streets of